Now hear this, all hands. Ready? Well, I'm proud to say with a deep, deep humility to share this day with you. I was a humble sailor, and I just added it up. I was sitting here a minute ago. 71 years ago next month, I enlisted in the Navy at 17 years. I uh, had a hand in, in this place years ago. I went from seaman, deckhand, to secretary of the Navy in 1969. And uh, at that time, uh, I knew about this property. And then in the course of my tenure there, as undersecretary, then secretary, we decided to dispose of it. And, uh, but I decided, you know, there's something historic about that. It. It's right there in Old Town, Alexandria. Well, anyway, I got to meet Miriam Van Lanningham. And uh, she got in to me and started talking to me. And the next thing I said, I think I know how to schnooker the system and convey this building to Alexandria. And we did it. I happen to be very interested in military history. And as I was walking around the factory, I got myself in front of that historic display down there by that large green test torpedo they have there. And on that, uh, in that display is a copy of the TORP. The TORP is the, is the employee newspaper of the workers of the factory here during World War II. In the masthead of that newspaper is this triangular banner, which I didn't really know anything about it, but I said, that thing, that thing is something I can maybe make a large version of and it has a strong shape and a strong personality. I think I can, I can use that. Um, I knew I couldn't use torpedoes because it's just too obvious. <laughs> so I did some research and I found out that that banner is, is uh, actually a, an extremely prestigious award that this facility got for, it's the E for Excellence Award, which was given to producers of military supplies. Extremely prestigious, it was signed by the president. And not only that, um, the stars on that banner, there are five of them, represent every six months of additional excellence in military production. My, my process is what you'd call site specific. So what I like to do is make the materials and the imagery and, and the idea behind each project have a direct relationship to the location of where it's located. And for that reason, I don't really work in one material. I just sort of go around and see where I find inspiration and then take it from there. My first thought was to make it out of actually handmade paper. At that point, I had never made a, sh a sheet of paper in my life, but I just decided that handmade paper would be a good way to go. And this is actually the point where the project really picked up steam because it turned out that uh, there's an artist here in the, in the factory in a printmaking collective uh, Patrick Sargent, who is an extraordinary paper maker, he had also ordered hundreds and hundreds of uh, military hospital scrubs online for his thesis project. So I wait till they go on surplus auction sites, and then I, I win them, and then you end up with 800 pounds of hospital scrubs. Which, then you gotta find a place for them, right? This is the stamp that was on the sheet that we uh, cut up for the material, and um, I like it because it says, you know, Removal from premises constitutes theft of government property, right? So in a, in a sense, our flag's becoming, you know, it's representing government property is made out of government stuff. <laughs> it's not stolen though. No. Pat's machine that beats the, uh, that, that beats the fabric into pulp is called a beater. And, and really it brought to mind, in my, to me, beating swords into plowshares. Um, taking surplus military hospital scrubs and converting them into an artwork, um, to me that, that sort of does that. To me the conversion of this place from a military hospital facility into uh, an art artist, uh, an art center is also beating swords into plowshares. That's all right. It's a good day for it. That's for sure. See, like, even after 15 minutes, it's already starting to break down the edges of the, of the uh, sheet that we cut. 
See it's softer on the edge right there? They don't just continue to do that until it pulls it completely apart. No chemicals, just water. That's what I think is really cool. You know, you're not adding anything in there except for water. Put it in here, right? And you just give it a shake, and if it suspends in the water, right, so without floating to the top or settling to the bottom, then you know it's ready. And oh my God, that would take forever, right? And he was like, oh, these paint strainers are awesome. I mean, look at that. You know how much water I just pulled out of that? You know, in virtually no time. So this is actually the pulp that's the chopped up, chopped up military hospital scrubs. Yeah. So. And it's been sitting in that bucket and it starts to smell a little right. And we're just gonna let this sit here for a minute. Like that, let the water drain out of it. It's like that. And then just pick this up like this. That's really thick, but that's okay. And this comes up. There's a sheet of paper. <laughs> It is, it's great stuff. Okay, so now I can start a stack of these. But yeah, it does, it moves right along. It's the same thing, just repeated many times. And now they're just like wet paper towels. They're really, I could write my name in it with, with my finger. They're really weak. So what I've figured out is that the best thing to do is, is just take the sheet a Pellon. This, is, this white stuff is Pellon they use in men's suits. So when I come back tomorrow, this will all be dry and it'll start to wrinkle and curl up and it won't really stick to itself. But it's okay because then the rice paper is going to go behind it and it'll you know, help it out. For some reason, all my projects seem I get to, they seem to take a long time and take a lot of hours of sort of repetitive things, but I don't really mind. I find it kind of meditative. And I think it actually gains some power when you see something that's taken an extended period of time to make like this. So all the, um, like here, you know, there's like funky corners and rough spots and things like that. I think that's okay. I, I think that's going to add to the piece's character, to the nature of it. It's funny, you know, it's like here we are in Old Town. It's like Old Town. It's, it's, there's so much amazing old brick sidewalks, brick buildings. It sort of like feels like it's uh, echoing that in the way this, this looks. I had no idea they would get so, these sheets of paper would get so funky and um, so much like old bricks. It sort of makes sense. It has a historic look to it, but it's not like so much historic stuff is made to look old and it, it ends up looking kind of fake in my opinion. Sometimes these things get so delicate that I have to just keep them on this sheet and just lay the sheet down like this so that it, because if I try to peel it off this backing, it's just gonna fall apart. Do like that, and then press it down with my hand. Then it's ready to come off. Like all those, those roughly edges, part of the personality of this handmade paper. There we go. Okay. It's from Japan. It's mulberry, mulberry paper. Comes in a roll. The thing about, um, I know with Japanese rice paper is, as far as what I've been told, you're never supposed to cut it with scissors or a knife. What you do is you take a brush, a wet brush, and draw with a wet brush 
and then pull it apart. And it gives you that nice, nice edge. I like that edge that I get when I, when I, when I cut it with the, uh, with the water. Now I want to get all the air bubbles out of there. And the fact is, I hadn't thought about that till now. You've got um, military hospital scrubs and bed sheets from the American hospitals, and you've got the paper from Japan. So in a way, it's sort of like a, sources that were foes during the Second World War are now joining together in this piece. So it's kind of symbolic in that way. It's nice when that kind of stuff happens without being planned. I mean, I think each material has has a has its own voice, and and if you have an idea that makes sense for that, that it sort of boosts the idea. Like right now, this paper it doesn't seem precious to me at all in the way it's the way it's its appearance is. It looks kind of it it has an honesty to it. It's not like in some, some, you know, a handmade, I see handmade paper in books very often or poetry, um, small editions. But this stuff looks like, looks like it was, you know, like you, you were doing de demolition on an old building. This is what you found under the wallpaper or under the floorboards. You know what I mean? It has a, it has a nice, without being like self-consciously kind of rough looking, it just has a nice honest look to it because it's just the process that makes it look like that. It's not me saying, oh, uh, I'm gonna you know, make it wrinkly on purpose. It's just the way the paper comes out. I think it's beautiful and nasty at the same time, which I always love if I can get that. So this has been a nice surprise. It's nice when the material sort of gives you a bonus like this. Now look at all this wrinkles in here. It's sort of like an elephant skin or something. You see like these growth rings kind of things here? I think that's, um, that's an unexpected bonus. I didn't even, even know those were in there until the, they came out here. Now what I've got to do is the lettering and the stars, the anchor, and also the, the garland, the wreath going around the letter E. And that's what's next. So for that, I've made templates out of cardboard. This is the bow, and then this is the, the oak leaf, goes up one side, and the laurel, this one repeats and goes up the other side. So this is, gives you an idea of the scale of how big the, the wreath will be. I think it's gonna be about a six foot circle of these things. So I'm gonna put these templates, these cardboard templates, down on here, and I'm gonna tear the newspaper around here I'll position it so that we can get the, the headlines in there um, of like, like here's uh, from the first Gulf War. This one we want to hit on. Saddam vows to fight on. This masthead here is exactly where the image of the E for Excellence Award is on the employee newspaper that they used to have here at the Torpedo Factory. So that's another way that we've gotten the, this project to go full circle. So I didn't want it to be really white like this. I wanted to, because, because the banner's coming out kind of old and distressed looking, I wanted some letters that would be sympathetic to that. They look like they belonged with it. If I put some bright white letters on top of this, this old distressed looking banner, it just wouldn't look right. So what I did was I took um, dregs of uh, the coffee maker and tea bags and put them in a, a water bottle and shook them together and just dumped them in the water along with the paper pulp. And then I made these letters. And actually when they dry, they, um, the brownish tea and coffee stuff sort of migrates out to the edge of it. So it almost looks like it's, um, like it's really, really old. And I like all the staining you get in there. There's pieces of coffee and tea, sort of chunks of stuff in there. There we go. Another nice thing is, I hope this happens with the piece. When the paper, when you hold it up to the light, it's very transparent. You can see through it. The same is true with the blue and the red, the sections of the banner. 
because it'll be hanging under a skylight, I hope that it has that, that sort of translucent look to it. Um, it just looks very official somehow. This edge is a, is a result of the process of making the paper. If I tried it, if I had sort of intentionally made it rough and, and um, irregular, I think it wouldn't have looked as good. It's almost like you can't do better than nature. You can't top nature. And just the way this stuff has so many bumps and, you know, craters and holes and some parts look like Swiss cheese and others look like the Declaration of, you know, Independence, like an old parchment document. So what I did was I created this, this template here. It's really just a framework, so the letters are consistent height and width. And um, there's three widths of letters, um, and I marked them down here. This is the, the A, the V, the Y, and the M are all the widest letters. If I want to make an E, I'm going to make it this wide, so I marked the E right there. And then the R and the N are this wide. Flip this over. Here's one of my sheets of paper. This one's pretty interesting. It has a hole in it. And I like that chunk of stuff in there. I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave that in there. So now I know that the letter V has to follow from the corner of this to the corner of that one. So I'm just going to just like use that. a stick and I can just tear this up like this. There we go. Wow, that's pretty cool. This one has a piece of stuff right in the middle, the shape of a heart. See that? I have no idea where that came from. I think it's a piece of the blue paper, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to keep that. It's very floppy stuff, but once it's dry, it's very strong. There we go. Use that piece to patch that. And it's another one of the coincidences of this project that the width of the paper sheets is exactly or close enough to what I needed for the width of these, of these letters. There it goes. I am, you know, I've been coming in, you know, every couple days for months now. Yeah. They gave me a space upstairs, so it, um, it's been a long haul. Um, yeah. It's probably been four or five months. But, you know, obviously you just keep on chipping away at it, and gradually it, it builds up. Well, good luck with the project. Nice Thank you. Talking. All right, nice talking. Yeah, have a good visit. OK. So this ribbon, I want to get wet first over in that sink so I'm gonna so it takes to the glue better. Alrighty. I made this this measuring device here so that the loops are consistent coming off the top edge. So since I have this crack in the floor right here, I made a mark in the stick to line up with this edge of the crack and then I loop off this nail, I put the loop in the fabric right over that inside the loop. And I put a brick on top of it so it's stretched out with that mark lining up with a crack. So that way the loops are all the same distance. But this crack, which I kind of like the idea, it's, you know, has been here since 19 whatever, whenever this place was made. Um, I'm going to assume that's as straight as I need it to be. It's good enough for me. <laughs> First I'm going to pull it this way, and then I'm going to walk it over. Oh, 
it's, there are parts of it that are sort of stuck to the ground, so I've got to lift it up a little bit from the sides. And it's really got itself glued down some places, but luckily with this, this distressed surface, it's not going to really hurt it. Just a little bit of adhesion here and there. The light comes through it. So I can do it better from that side. It's right here. Okay. You hear that sound of the coming off the floor? There it goes. I think that's it. I was telling Rich, you know, luckily it has a very distressed. Yeah. And then we can just, um, yeah, we can just walk on. Just go like this. Just keep it kind of. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> that looks really cool. Now we just like lift up the fold and get these points out. There we go. Okay, now we just walk these back that way. Wow. I'm so glad I had help. That's good right there. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love the different I love textures. The, this. That yeah. Feel to it. Here's the E in the middle. E for excellence. So that can cover that that one spot. There. Dripping wet. There we go. There's the stars and the anchor. Hello, how are you? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh huh. It's gonna hang in the atrium. I say, cool. Wow. Is this a flag or a banner? And I said, yep. I always go into these big projects hoping that the um, the end result is is greater than the sum of its parts, so that you sort of you you sort of have an idea of what it's going to look like, but hopefully when you put it together, it's going to go beyond that. And I like, I really like the variation in the, um, the batches, the different the sections of the thing. I think that really, really makes it uh, much more interesting. And I like how rough it is in an in a honest looking kind of way, not a self-consciously sort of um, not a way that makes it look like um, I did it on purpose. It just happened that way because of the process. So I'm happy about that too. And I'm happy these stars are sticking on there, which means this is actually going to work. Because I wasn't really sure. <laughs> Until you do something, you don't really know. The next big hurdle is, um, is installation. But, um, any of that medium. It is an exciting moment for sure. Like, at the moment, I was just thinking, like, can these letters handle being rolled? Are they going to adhere well enough to stick onto it? So far, I'm thinking it's going to be okay. This is how they built the pyramids, by the way. <laughs> Good morning. No, just like that. That's my hand on you. Hi, how are you? Hold on, hold on. There we go. I knew I made these loops big for a reason. So the main thing is the pole's staying on top and we're not stressing out the loops yet. 
Okay, cool. That's perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my rope. I'm gonna put the rope around it so that when we unfurl it, we can lower it down. We can let it down slowly using the rope. Clear. And now we're gonna let the banner go a little bit with the ropes. Just unfurl the ropes a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Now keep the tension on that rope. There you go. Yeah, see the rope's taking the weight. Keep on doing the ropes a little bit. Keep going. That's groovy. Oh man, this is working out great. There you go. Are you guys feeling like at the end of your rope about now? <laughs> yeah, it's good when you're walking up the stairs. I like it. I like the back a lot. We just got to go for it. Just hoist it up to me on the ladder, and then I'm going to walk it up the ladder. You get around that? Yep. This is why we go to the gym. <laughs> yep. <sighs> okay. It's all right. That's part oh. of its uh, shabby genteel appearance. Thank you. Oh, that is so cool looking. Okay. Release the beast. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. Okay. Whoa. We'll just have to fold it in on itself a little bit like this. That's it. There we go. Yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> Tie off the wires. That's all she wrote. It's doing what I wanted it to do. Maybe a little bit more. I didn't know when I started this project that we have these newspapers for the wreath in here. Um, I didn't know how these, how these things were going to look as, as nasty as they do. And I mean nasty in a good way. It looks like it's, you know, been flying over a fort somewhere. Been the war. Yeah, been through the war. Exactly. It's been battle, been through the battle. But I think they're really an important part of it because now it's not just a, a tribute piece to some, to the, which is an important part of it is that it's a tribute to the World War II history of this facility and the people that worked here, but it also connects it to recent history. I want to do something really big and really simple and just like to, you know, you can't ignore and also be a counterpoint to all this, you know, this visual activity. I like that a lot. And then that right next to it is that thin spot where it's, it's, um, it's, it's so thin that you can see the, the red through it. That's the color of the scrubs before they got turned into pulp. This is the color of the paper if you took it out right away, the new paper. And this is the colors you get when those things sit in a tub for however long they sat and started getting into, turning into science projects. I thank you. I oh, appreciate you. That, that is I very, very, very emotional sweet. and my husband, uh, oh. I just retired from the Navy after 28 years. Oh so I, man, of course it uh, resonates then. Wow. We've been through a lot of deployments. <laughs> oh. Well, he should have been congratulations. here Congratulations. Uh, we'll bring him by. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. I'm excited. I like the way it looks. I'm very proud of this thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a hunk, of, hunk of history. Kind it's of a thing. hunk of history. <laughs> <laughs>
Of course, thank you to the Art League and the Torpedo Factory and the friends of the Torpedo Factory who are providing funding for documenting this project. Just as importantly, thank you to the Impart Program vets.